What's up, guys? Welcome back to the TCG Scrubs podcast. I'm Oscar. Uh, sorry we've been out for a couple weeks here. Had some things going on. Uh, took a break, and uh, we're back. We got a lot to talk about, I think. Um, maybe with the usual dudes. We got Colin. We got Joey. And uh, yeah, we're going to guess, get into things. Um, super, shout out to everybody for your your pre-orders uh, over at Happy Little Hug Factory. You know, you help them out a lot. You help us when you visit the link in the description below. Um, I think Colin was mentioning they have pre-orders for the next cluster already, right? Yeah, so if you go to Happy the Hook Factory's website, uh, and make sure you use the link in the description uh, below also, uh, they have pre-orders for the booster box, which they're selling for forty-seven ninety-five, and both of the star decks are up for both Melgus and Faria for fourteen ninety-five each. Um, we'll probably talk about that a little bit later, um, but I'll also be going into that a little bit more detail on the news, hopefully this week, if you guys are kind of confused on what's going on with there. But uh, yeah. yeah, so make sure you go and pre-order those, because uh, especially if it's anything like this time, that'll be possibly your only physical avenue of ever getting a box. Yeah, I was going to say, I couldn't emphasize any, any, like, enough to say that your pre-orders are probably more important now than they've ever been before. So definitely uh, visit that link in the description below and pick up the next cluster already. Uh, I know it's, it's a bit early, but um, I know they get pre-orders in to distributors at an early time as well compared to when everybody's ready to actually start buying. So uh, it's just important to keep these things in mind. Um, also, yeah. shout out to our patrons at patreon.com slash TCG Scrubs. If you guys are listening to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, or Google Podcast, or any other podcast service, it is thanks to a lot of the patrons. If you guys want to help support this and what you're hearing here, uh, definitely head over there to uh, patreon.com slash TCG Scrubs uh, to definitely keep that going. And uh, yeah. for all these cool things we do with improved sound equipment and all that other stuff. But uh, thank you to yeah. our patrons as well. We have cool content over there. We have a patron podcast as well as some random gameplay that I'll record when we're just casually playing on Wacky. Um, and some you Tom's know. deck analysis. Sorry, there's one more thing. Uh, <laughs> deck analysis and just what uh, end of game kind of discussions. I think we did one for the oversized cards. You uploaded that, right? Yes. Yeah, so that one was a really good conversation. Uh I think we re- yeah, we really went in depth on that one, and we'll do more of that as well. So, mm-hmm. oversized cards were so dumb. <laughs> I um, loved it. I was, I'm curious if if because like because I don't think I had heard any feedback about like our you know, our like little Patreon only games and stuff. Like, so I was curious like if people enjoy that, you yeah. know, because I think it's cool. Yeah, I mean I, it, it's good. I mean I don't need, necessarily need enough you know feedback. It's just it's out there for them to enjoy. Um, yeah. They see our thought processes, especially when this, this set that we that just came out, the set's Battle of Valhalla. Uh, we got to go over it and like just d- mind dump our, our decks out and then start testing them and tweaking them. And, and I didn't record all our games. Um, some games, you know, it was just uh, it was kind of late and things got delirious. But um, it, you see the transition over time of like our decks evolving and changing and stuff like yeah. that, which is pretty cool. We've been brewing a lot of stuff. We have, and I'm like, so I'm like already excited to go again. Like I got another deck idea I want to put together and see or mm-hmm. tweak the Freyla one. I did a Freyla deck with Joey, and there, I mean, there's changes I want to make to that already, just based on that last gameplay. Uh, but anyways, Patreon.com/slash G Scrubs. If you guys want to check that stuff out. Um, anything else, Colin? Um, no, I think, and like I said, I'll. Uh, be trying to ke- we're going to do a little bit of or I'm going to do a little bit of catch up so there's going to be a big news segment this week catching you guys up on a bunch of stuff obviously that's been happening both in this and the, the Argent news and we'll have the mini podcast after this and I'll try and I'm going to try and do some other Patreon content as well but we'll uh, I'll be mm-hmm. figuring that out later well to get things started for the night I did have a note here for set release so the new set came out uh, this weekend this uh, you know past Friday that just came out. We did a, a box opening. You guys can go check it out. Double um, box opening. Yeah, double box opening uh, where we, we really uh, took the time to not just open it and give our opinions on the set, but to just discuss things as well as how things are going in the game and how things could go in the future. So uh, if you're just not wanting to watch it because you thought it was just a normal box opening, you can go at least enjoy it for that and maybe just listen to it if anything else. And it's especially interesting to, especially with the double box opening, I think to watch ours and then watch other people's box openings they might have uploaded to get an idea on the poll ratios and stuff like mm-hmm. that, I think is going to be, because this is the most different Force Will has ever been with their poll ratios. Usually before it's always been buy through boxes. You, for the most part, get a play set of everything that you need to play the game. 
and this is very drastically different. And so getting a going in with a good idea of what to expect with a booster box, if you're able to get a hold of one, is a, a good. So I think watching ours and other people's box openings is is actually very uh, good for this set. Yeah, it's it's definitely a very tricky set to. I don't know the player collectors, whatever standpoint you want to view it from. Yeah, it's it's like easily in the past we would get two boxes, open it up, you'd have. 89% of the cards is that you, know, you probably wanted. Um, yeah, if you two, pick, two boxes and pre-release, with, I was always set. Right, and if you had to pick up anything beyond that, it was like, uh, you know, I want to build this one deck that I already know I want to do. Yeah. Uh, two cards, you know, two cards, three cards, you know, one card here. Commons, uncommons, rares, whatever. SRs. Uh, it, this one is a, is a lot trickier. Like I was pointing out uh, to Colin, I mentioned to you guys when I was at pre-release, is that uh, you can easily open up a pack of 10 cards and there's only like one new card in there because you could have all the reprints of common and commons, one rare for the rare slot or SR, and then the, the, the full art could just be a reprint of one of the actual common and common reprints. So um, it, it can work against you. I don't know how, I, I didn't count how many often, how often you see a pack of just the one rare or SR, but um, mm. Yeah, it is a, it's a little unfortunate to open that up and find that. I, I think you you found out about what ratios like the the new uncommon cards are just as rare as the uh, f- the SRs, the full art SRs. The the full art uncommons are j- as far as like the just number that you pull is mm-hmm. the same at, at, at pull rate as the SRs. So in a box, you and I both pulled four full art uncommons and full full art. SRs now uh, there's um, ten uncommons versus twenty SRs, so statistically, it's more rare to pull a specific SR in four than a specific uncommon in four. Mm-hmm. But just to pull one in general in four is is uh, statistically identical for both of them, which I thought was really interesting. So if we had the regular ten SRs like we would have usually, uh, they would have the odds of you pulling any single four card of both those rarities would have been identical. And to be clear, when we say the uncommon full art, we mean those the the new ones, the uh, the color yeah. fixing full arts is is what's yeah. the hard to pull thing. Um, and it's just it is just the full art uh, version of it. So I guess that's what that's going to offer some some value to those at least. Potentially, we'll see how much play they end up being uh, mm-hmm. taking place inside of the game. Obviously, that I think they're pretty strong, but because of how you know frail they are, they it could uh, it could go either way depending on how aggressive the decks and everything are going forward on how good color fixing could be in yeah, this I mean, having done art tests, I mean, we've done, I'll just real quick, Joey, uh, I find a secondary ability, like a Yushi, a lot more defining of how well that card is. Like, you know, sack yeah. this, create a moon, that's, that's solid, you know, something like that. But. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of, I think those color fixings are going to be, like, super important to, like, even, even just, like, getting, because, so, we've seen a lot of the power packed into those super rares, so even getting um, your color fixer just to let you play that is is like worth it and like and so I, I think it may be pretty important. Like in in a in a in a Loki deck, you know, you want your uh, Shadow of Kronos. I think, I think think is what the color fixer is card. Like you need him in order to play Loki, and it's like so like he's important for you. Like just just to play Loki, you don't need any other black cards. You don't need anything else, but. You know he'll be needed to play that. Like look at, um, like when I made, uh, you know, I I made a, a, a Fu Fu Shi deck, and it's like the dragon emblems and are so <coughs> important, and there's so much power packed in there that you kind of have to play the dragon, and you have to play in order to you know play um, Shen Gong. The, I think the yeah, well the yeah, yeah, it's so like there's so much power packed in those super rares that you kind of need the color fixing to play them. Well, in, one way, all you need to do is have them stick onto the uh, table because you can think of it almost as a, a, a one cost, produ- your stones game produces color to end of turn as long as it sticks on, sticks on the table because in response to someone trying to destroy it, you can tap the stones for the colors you need. So um, it, on that front, as long as <coughs> your opponent doesn't cancel the card, uh, you, you essentially get color fixing at minimum for the rest of your turn. Yeah, no, they're, I think they're they're at a, you know, it's very interesting. I think they're definitely going to be required in a lot of decks. And, like, there's so much power in those resonators that they kind of need them. Um, you know, it's just um, my, my opinion of the new set. Short yeah. Opinion. So the, um, 
Well, and, and real quick, going back to what Oscar was saying, I'd mentioned this in the box opening, but uh, as far as like opening a pack and ha- having nine B reprints, that that's one thing that I think is a little disappointing. Not just like opening a pack and then having only one new card in it, but just like the like I, I was saying, Oscar, for me at least, in the back of my head, like. It was different going through this box opening than other ones. If you saw, we did a double box opening and the whole video was 30 minutes. Usually they're much, much longer than that. And it's because you're like, oh, look at these new cards. Oh, I like the art on this new card. Oh, I like this ability of this common card or different things like that. And these ones are just like, shunk, toss that. And here's the two cards we actually care about. (laughs) And so in the back of your head, it's just this like less exciting experience of like, did I pull a good card? Nope pull one single good card oh i pulled two okay cards in this one or one good card one okay card whatever combination um and so it was a little less exciting i mean obviously it's more exciting when you pull the bigger stuff i guess kind of but i don't think it's necessarily more exciting than it was before pulling like a ford sr versus a ford sr before uh so that was just something that ran through my head of like that but yeah it, it, I mean, it's, it is unfortunate. I didn't realize our, our, the, the box would be much shorter as a result. But yeah, I mean, because even if the card sucked, you're like, man, this card, I hate this card. Apparently this sucked. And it adds more conversation to the video. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm also, as you're talking, I was thinking, I was like, you know, there's a lot of, like, talk about, like, oh, this is great because, you know, people who don't have the starter decks can get these. And then I, I think that there's more people saying that than there are people saying, oh, hey, I didn't get the starter decks. I'm glad I'm getting these, you know. I've seen a few, but I'm just, I think it outweighs one over the other. But, oh, that's, that's funny. Um, I, 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 know I don't that, know if I understand the phrasing of what you just said. but So, Oscar's basically saying there's more, he hasn't heard a lot of people who are like, oh man, I'm glad I get to get these cards from the starter deck. And oh. the amount of people saying it's good for those other people is higher. I oh. I butchered that phrasing. Okay, like people who... Be, people who okay, wanted see, those see. cards from the starter deck. People who want those cards versus people saying that other people want those cards is what yes. you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, one's okay. higher than the other one. Um, yeah. I mean, I know that... Yeah, because it's, it's... I think... Well, and it, it, it's one of those things where it's like... No one's necessarily excited about getting cards from the star decks because it's just a necessity even if you're like oh cool i get to get these cards from the star deck you're not excited about it because i think everyone's aware of the reason we're getting these is because the company never sent you the star decks to buy on your own and so i think there's that that people are are aware of of like yeah they're happy to be getting them but they're not going to be posting like how happy they are that they're getting them because it's like it's it's a necessity just to play the game it's not like oh cool we get to get these cool uh, Vin Golf three cards that I wasn't able to get that are actually like super cool that uh, you know something some sort of pass set that isn't like necessary to play the game type of reprint or I, I don't know how necessarily they word that but well, like it, it's I mean, like a necessity rather than like an exciting event especially yeah. without getting the rulers if we were getting the rulers they could potentially or if it was alternate arts similar to what they did with um, uh, ancient knights uh, having the reprints from the star decks but it was different art then that's actually kind of cool because you're like, oh, which art do I like better and stuff like that. But the fact that it's just reprints with the same art takes away some of the excitement. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was also thinking like... With them, for, except for the rapid fire mirror or whatever that you <laughs> use the wrong art. Uh, I was, I was going to add on to what I had said earlier about the, the voices of one side or the other. It could also just be like the way things like either are on YouTube or even just in real life, like the voice of like say the negative voices, you know, are, are louder than the positive because sometimes the positive won't say anything at all. That makes sense, kind of like. Well, it's, that's it's, what it's, I'm. It's not a perfect analogy of what I'm trying to, to compare it to, but it's it's an example of what I'm trying to show it as. Well, that, that's kind of what I was trying to say. Is like mm-hmm. I'm not saying people are unhappy about not necessarily a majority of people are may, maybe necessarily unhappy about it, but the people that are happy about it, they're not going to go posting about it because mm-hmm. it's just it's just reprints at the end of the day. It's not something mm-hmm. to go uh, phone home about. So it's not necessary. But yeah, the people who are going to be upset about it are going to post more than them. And then it, you compound that with this isn't really something to be. You're not going to post your polls of reprints and stuff like that. So it's, sure. I, I think it's just we're not going to see that side of it, regardless of how big or small that crowd should, might we should, be. We should do a troll post of that, just like all our reprints laid out. And be like, ah, oh, yeah, how did I do, guys? Could you post in the global group? <laughs> <laughs> I don't guys, I got my. 
I have four copies of Air. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'll, 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 po- I'll post set. a picture of like, oh, I'm so excited. I got my these brand new reprints of Donut Drone and post a picture of my <laughs> promo Donut Drones. I also, maybe they come off a li- in a bad way, I guess. A make it, yeah, well, make it look like we're making fun of people who didn't get them, you know, in a way. I guess that could be a bad idea. <laughs> but it's funny to talk about. Um, I, I know that one thing I'm going to do. We could, wait, real quick. Uh, do a picture of like, man, look what I pulled today. <laughs> look at these crazy reprints. It's just a picture of our our five starter deck boxes with the cards in them. <laughs> I think my favorite joke still is the one where it's like, oh man, someone posted like way before spoilers started. Like, can I get spoilers for the next set already? And someone just started posting spoilers starter deck images. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, anyways, I, what, I loved that. More serious. Uh, something I, I wanted to do, and I saw I saw Jeremy over at Roller School uh, commenting this in the global group, and I want to do this for our locals as well uh, to help get newer people into the game is that uh, using a lot of these reprints and the draft rulers and creating these like kind of decks that they could use uh, obviously they're not these crazy amazing things but they're things that they can learn with take home and like continue playing like, it's better than the teaching decks that are out now or if they're even and using those anymore I don't even know but it's, it's, it's a, it's a modern day teaching deck I think I think also because as you know, as far as you guys like, do feel that pre release was like really crappy, and I never got to, I ne- I wasn't able to do my video. I was really busy, but um, but like I felt like when I looked at the set, I felt like the cards that they added into, that they added as reprints, worked together among that group of cards. So like, you know, all of the the light cards that were reprinted kind of all worked together and had a theme. Mm-hmm. It's the same as like like I I think like like. The red cards, uh, they reprinted both Surtur and uh, Sand Dragon, right? Because like that's that's like a combo you could not, theoretically get in. Not Surtur. Sand the, Dragon, oh, yeah. The Fire Giant. Yeah, no, they didn't reprint him. They printed a new Surtur. <laughs> no, I, I thought they 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 he was in the reprints. No, he wasn't even a starter deck card. He was from the, I think the first set. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I have a full art well, of him anyways. somewhere over here, and you can't get a four at hollow inside of the starter deck. I thought, um... I was there when Oscar bought that full art. Yeah, <laughs> I bought it from Happy Little Hug Factory. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, the, the, there's definitely, yeah, because because they're all from the reprints from the star deck, they all follow the theme, like Joey's saying, so because they're all like tribal and have sim- sim- simple themes and stuff like that it does make an easy entry point to get people used to the idea of how synergy and different things work inside of the game and uh, stuff like that so it's definitely uh, a good idea to do if uh, you, you you have locals that mm-hmm. you have new people come in or you're trying to build it uh, especially if you already have the star decks and you're buying these booster boxes this is all just fluff cards uh, at this mm-hmm. point so it's um, but yeah, way like, to put uh, them to use. I'm I'm sitting here getting ready to ship these to Joey. Once he gives me the word, <laughs> he can go build some decks and start playing at home. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They they didn't reprint Surtur, and I do still kind of feel. I still do stand <laughs> by. Well, up. my it's just my example fell so flat. Now it's like <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, when like Joe, when Carl have... was like, yeah, Joey's right. I'm like, no, not anymore. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Oh yeah, I was like, no, I, like, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, there's, it's, I still do feel like they did kind of, um, have some, like, you know, how, how they reprinted Jiraiya and Jiraiya's Toad, right? Yeah. Like, that was the, that was what I was trying to get to, mm. but I had the Surger and Sand Dragon example obviously did not work. But anyways, so, like, so I think, I think it's a great thing if people, you know, put together little mini decks. I think yeah, that's um, I'm going to uh, see if Jeremy made gotchas for that. If not, maybe see if we can work together and make some gotchas. Uh, we'll put it up on the website and, um try to share links everywhere so everybody can do this at their locals and help build some small little communities going um you know obviously but, um, play your, your alter loki against somebody who has one of those <laughs> to teach them how to play <laughs> but but play with them you know teach people some, some new players well there's a lot of decks you probably shouldn't play against them now but um so and uh, speaking of having uh, a lot of certain cards and stuff like that one other thing I don't know if it was during our books opening or right after it after we're done recording, but um, I I was doing the math with Oscar, and so I had figured out to get a roughly get a play set of all the SRs now, 
which before was three boxes, you now have to, uh, to guarantee you get a playset of all the SRs, you now have to buy a case uh, of full six boxes of this new set. It, which is kind of irrelevant at this point, because you're not going to find a case anywhere, but... Um, <laughs> And Nick Cluster, they're changing it, so we don't know what ratios are going to be. For, but for this one, it was an interesting thing to note that you will need to get a case to get a, a place of SRs, which means you're going to have a shiz ton of just excess reprint cards that are just multiples and multiples of them. Well, you know yes. what? Uh, real, 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 real quick on what Colin just said, that's one, Jimmy. Uh, something our, my LGS told us was like that, yeah, the boxes are out of stock, but apparently there's still uh, pre release kits in stock that you can go grab. It's not a sealed booster box, and it's two of them, but apparently those are there's still some you can go grab and, and purchase in, in place of boxes. Like our LGS is doing that in place of uh, boxes since she sold all hers out as price support for when we go play. <laughs> like I think it's, and I'll like say that I feel like the company kind of misstepped here. Like I feel like if they created and drafted this set to kind of boost sales and and like and save money and like have chase super rares which is what you know what it seems like the reason for going for the 20 super rares seems like it was they really should have printed more boxes like they they shouldn't they should have like maybe taken a little bit of a a little bit of a risky maneuver and like actually filled out more orders than pre-order you know than just the pre-orders like it's i don't know you know it just feels like they should there should be more a little bit more um well, especially if they're thinking, because one of the reasons they did such a huge power spike in this set is because they have the philosophy that if you make a set uh, boxes that have mm -hmm. broken stuff in it, more people are going to buy it. So if that's your philosophy, why didn't you print more stuff? Um, I know uh, I had messaged uh, Rudy on Patreon, and he had messaged back that he he uh, um, believes that some were lost or damaged, some of the boxes that were sent, but even at that they had only printed pre-orders they didn't print pre-orders plus some so once all the pre-orders were filled if someone wanted uh you know to play force of will there's not going to be any boxes for it um well there'll be some for you know, obviously the stores that pre-ordered extra on top of that but a lot of stores only pre-order for what their um uh base needs and stuff like that mm -hmm. and it so my, my guess, because it sounds like a lot of people were having problems with, uh, I think, GTS distribution, is maybe whatever shipment they were getting, had, they, there was trouble with that, perhaps. And so that's why they were short it so much, because uh, it was significant amounts. But even at that, um, it, it's one of those things where the company should be con uh, overcompensate for stuff like that. And it, some people are saying, oh, GTS is bad, you shouldn't go through them. Well, one, forcible should be aware and once again compensate or figure out some workaround for that uh but two uh because pe people were like hey i am at my locals i didn't get my pre-orders and they're like oh what does your distributor use and they're like oh it uses um gts and they're like well that's your problem go use a different one well your locals isn't going to do that for force of will you're, for you're not going to switch distributors or even use one just for force of will go out of their way to do all that most locals don't care that much about force of will to do that uh I, I if i was running a game store and the one that was making me the least amount of money all of a sudden i have to go out of my way to just get product for it uh i'm going to be less incentivized to do that so i think the company really needs to figure out what went wrong this set and make sure it doesn't happen again because i this think, is well, is going to hurt i think a lot good Oh, I was I was, was going to say I was going to ask like is do you was this like set considered a, a failure of a set or do you think it's su like, succeeding what the company wanted or do you think it's like like good in some ways bad in other ways? Real quick, I think it's too soon to tell. Okay, I think it's probably as of now from what we can tell, good in the sense of it sounds like they're going to sell most of what was shipped out. But that's also because they shipped out for pre-orders, so everything is guaranteed to be bought already. Mm -hmm. And it was less than that, so people who didn't get the pre-order or pe and stuff like that are going to try and f snatch up the boxes elsewhere and stuff. So from a sales perspective, by default, it will be. But whether it's a net positive or net negative, we won't see until like the next set or two what people's mm -hmm. and stores' reaction is to this set. Because 
uh, we won't see the reaction to the set inside of the set because that's not possible really as far as the cell's perspective so I think we, we really won't even know like Oscar said until, until later mm-hmm. um, I was going to chime in I think it was a communication thing um, again because I, I was talking to our LGS and she was talking to one of the distributors that she works with and they were saying that uh, there was no communication from Force of Will on the fact that they need to pre-order and that they're only printing the pre-order they just got the sales sheets yeah, from from what I heard, there's there's also yeah a thing of like their force will just didn't market it. They didn't go around mm-hmm. saying like, hey, you need to pre-order this. They yeah they made no proactive efforts for the set for whatever reason. Um, maybe it was to promote that new uh, what, what was that new game Cesspool. that's on the poster cesspool. <laughs> They're putting all their money in on cesspool now. The next next so big weird. game, guys. Tell you, tell only, your little nephews to go play cesspool. I've only just now heard of this, and I don't know what it is. Uh, it was it was posted in the global group, and um, every set they'll they'll send a poster out. And it's usually hyping the next set, but the last two have hyped you the current think. set that's out, which is really weird. You know, it's showing its release date. So this one that came out now has a picture, you know, of, of the the Loki, and um, the posters are usually like like this large. You know, like like a like a tall. I can't do it here properly. I don't know. There you go. There, there, there. Uh, well, look, uh, look have, behind I have, me. I have one. Yeah, look, look. You see how much they, how big they are. Yeah. Well, the bottom third is now dedicated to an ad for another another game. It's a board game called Cesspool. Uh, which which of those? That that always makes me feel good when the company making my game is so confident they don't even want to dedicate a whole poster to it. <laughs> like, what you know what you guys will like also Cesspool. <laughs> <laughs> and we looked up on social media like their last post was like months ago like they're no longer communicating <laughs> on social media it's a game that has been in Japan since 2017 oh okay um, so, so this is already a, a, a game that's out and everything yeah, yeah hold on let, let me read you Joey so it's <clears throat> Cesspool the crime management simulation board game remastered welcome to the city of immorality a crime management simulation game with the theme of narcotics manufacturing and smuggling. Cesspool is on sale in Japan, coming soon to USA. Doesn't even have a release date, by the way, for USA. Uh, just says, hey, do you like Perfect Loki? Well, then you'll like crime management with narcotics. <laughs> it was, it's it the was weirdest thing. That is, and, that is funny. And it's a I, new thing. Uh, I asked Jeff, and Jeff has no idea what it is. <laughs> But, uh, so so we went over set release, kind of uh, as far as how they're difficult to pull now. Um, we, we also found the uncommons, the color fixers. So Colin opened up one box and got essentially a place set of a couple and missing one of on a few of the others that weren't the full. No, no, no. I, I didn't get a place set of any of them. Um, I thought you got one as a place set or two. I thought two were play sets and the rest were just missing one of. No, no. There's... One I might have got a place out of. I can't remember if I traded you for the this full is not version of it. Arts either. Excluding oh, not including full arts. Yeah, yeah. Then no, the the color fixers. None of them were play sets. The highest threes? I got was was two or three of them. I had three of the rest were one and two of. Oh, okay. It, uh, that's why I was like, yeah. what 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 the heck is this? I need to buy. Judging by the math on that, you could maybe get a play set with two boxes, but odds are you need three boxes just to get play sets of the color fixers. Yeah, I did. I did two two pre, or one pre-release kit, which is two boxes, and then I went to pre-release, and I was able to get about like six to eight per each one, and then we opened okay. up our, our box, and then I got more. So I was able to help Colin fulfill all the rest of his color fixers just so he make sure he had them. But yeah, um, that's another one. I guess it's, it's those are only going for like a dollar less now, which is pretty cool. They've dropped. Uh, probably like sixty cents or something. Like that. Who knows how much? Well, time you hear they're this. interesting because yeah, sometimes there'll be two of them in a pack. I noticed, uh, which was kind of weird. Uh, so I feel like two, two of them being two different named ones. Two different named ones, yeah. yeah without either of them being four, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. So it could be they're common enough, but the pull rates are kind of weird for them. But the the full arts, I think, they're kind of cheap right now. But I feel like the full arts might go up a little bit more in price. Mm-hmm. It's probably waiting for an event to find out which ones will which actually ones be good. playable, and then those ones will go up. Yeah. Um, which kind of leads into the whole secondary events. market conversation. Well, yeah, I'd say it leads into the oh, okay. um, secondary, secondary market <laughs> conversation, uh, which I feel like we've already kind of touched base on. Like speaking of the rarity of the pools, yeah. like kind of on that. I want to say like uh, when we when we, <laughs> I think Con already gave spoilers for those who didn't watch the box opening yet on, on, on God Packs. But anyways, I was I was looking <laughs> at prices. Like yeah, high God God Pack is worth way more than a normal God Pack. 
Like, is it? Oh yeah, yeah, no way more. Like, like some of the cards, uh, I think the highest uh, cost cards in a normal god pack is like 17, 18 bucks. Meanwhile, like the I think the the high gods god pack, there's like uh, a twenty three, a twenty six, and a thirty, and it's like just off of three cards. Like I think the cheapest one goes for seventeen. Like, there's like two seventeens and maybe one eleven. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's worth way more if you get the high god god pack. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Um. Yeah. Good. I was just moving on. You're moving well, no, secondary we were, market. Yeah. Colin, Colin, no. wanted, Colin wanted to make a comment about the secondary market. Oh, that that was your entire secondary market conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was waiting for you guys. To was that? Hey, sometimes god packs are worth more than other god packs. Secondary I, market. I, honestly, I'm waiting. For you. <laughs> I was really wanting to get Oscar, to the next Oscar, thing. All right. Oscar's wait, waiting to fight. Uh. <laughs> uh I, I know what Oscar's getting to, but... <laughs> no, it's not that, even that. That's like two conversations away. I have other stuff on here. <laughs> Go ahead, Colin. Talk about that second no, market I, at, 30, at 30 minutes of this podcast so far. <laughs> I guess we'll talk about it in the po- post-show uh, since uh, Oscar's no, like, what it. ideas do you have? And I give one idea. He's like, cool, we're not going to do that. Anyways. All right, move <laughs> on to next topic. Wow, putting that, putting that conversation behind a paywall, Colin. Jeans. No, <laughs> it's 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 very suited for that. Um, um, since this game is behind a paywall now, <laughs> um, I, I want to give a shout out. I don't know why it's so low on this thing. I should have had it way up higher to, to Joey for his Joe's corner. Now he was gonna have a pre-release primer. He had about what three weeks to get it ready, but didn't do it yeah, at all. I forgot. I forgot about it on the weekend. <laughs> like I forgot about it until the weekend of like the weekend before the weekend. Yeah, and then and the during the week weekend. I had like. Some size plans and stuff, and my work. Yeah, my work got really busy. Um, so he, and so he's gonna he's gonna release a, a release week video, but it's probably gonna be a week after release, right? Yeah, yeah. And he kind of what go over the cards and stuff like that. Wait, wait. Yeah, get, just hype it up, hype it up, man. What we'll talk about uh, it now? It's, it's gonna it be <laughs> it's gonna be like a lot of oh, crazy card analysis, like pull ratios. Um, I'm gonna go through power levels and. Uh, I'm, uh, it's it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, uh, probably half of that is uh, there's not gonna be pull ratios. Not gonna. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll say it's not gonna but, be like all you know, like talking about the negative parts of it. But you're gonna, gonna get like the actual there. analysis of like the, the 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 cards and where they're gonna be useful and stuff like that. We'll have a nice billboard for. behind me. A nice little whiteboard I can draw my my percentages on. Wow. But no, yeah. It's I'm just gonna kind of go over like what cards are cool. Are what you, you know, because I find it interesting now how since since I've been kind of making decks. I've been like, okay, so, you know, I'm going to make a, a machine deck. And I'm like, well, I, you know, I kind of have to just throw Deus Ex Machina in there. And I have to throw the, the Machine Work Girl in there. And it's like, in the deck, like, half of it, I swear, just kind of builds itself. And it's like, mm-hmm. and it's so interesting to build these these decks around these huge power cards. Because, I mean, they just kind of lend themselves to a lot of their, their own deck building. Kind of yeah, I just realized something. The conversation Colin said I was trying to rush to is actually the one I was moving away from. So, and now he's trying to hide it behind the paywall. What? I never. So that people. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I think know, you're I'm confusing just, me with Joey. Clicking. Joey said you were rushing to something. I didn't say you were rushing anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Anyways, Joe's Corner. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> you'll do. You'll also have a top eight like analysis, right? Because I know we had a uh, Italian Masters uh, this. This weekend, uh, you guys are really selling this, like, which it's good, you know, putting putting me on the spot. But no, I, I, yeah, there was a recent event that mm-hmm. I thought would would be pretty interesting to go it's over a, it's a and see some of the event. decks they built. Yeah, it's cluster yeah. only event, but I mean, I believe and uh, no man list uh, incorporated. Yeah. Kind of some, somewhere in Europe, uh, I don't know who it was, but it's Germany, but they had a man list incorporated. So I want to bring something up real quick. I didn't actually have this on here, but <laughs> it's been something that's been bothering me for a while. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's going to bother me even more, but I'm going to go with it now that I know this is how it's going to be run. Um, is it Uthgarda Loki, the black uh, yeah. giant? Um, oh. It, the English card on it is the three cost. Um, your opponent discards a card you pay for in your life. And uh, there's, a, there's a, um, a template, I guess you can say, that all the giants are going by, and that, that one giant doesn't go by the same template. And that's where it's like enter ability is the same as it's like uh, activate ability uh, from hand. Um, and mm-hmm. at first, there was some saying, oh, there's an errata on it saying that it runs the same way as the interplay, so it kills a J slash resonator. 
Um, I didn't agree with it, obviously, at first. I was super against it, saying, who is it that's eradicating this? Because it sure isn't the company. Uh, and I think we found out that some people in Australia were doing it. Um, I just hate some people, since judges aren't recognized, recognized anymore, um, who are, are making it to where it works the way they all have worked. Um, and it just kind of bothered me. Uh, it was just something that I was like, I don't know, I, listen, I'm going by what the card says until the company says something. Uh, which it's possible they could always say something. And I'll, I'll accept it at that point because the rule. But um, I, I did some digging and stuff like that and asked questions in, in certain places. And um, it looks like that's just the wide acceptance now. That's just kind of how it's going to work going forward um, based really? on the event you're attending. Um, you'll always want to, I guess, ask and double check when you're going somewhere or you're going to play maybe with your, your local groups of how they're going to play it. Um, I did, you know, talk with uh, Jeremy over Ruler School and for the new upcoming event he had going on at Cel- Force Real Celebration, uh, which you guys can check out. It's October 12th weekend uh, in Michigan. You can go pre- pre-register. Uh, you can, you know, visit his channel and find a video about that, I believe. Or we can link it. I, I need to remember to link it. I'm already linking something else. And I don't want to forget all the links. But um, you can attend that event and, and pre-register and all that cool stuff. It's a pretty cool event. Um, definitely, you know, supporting the, the game. Uh, but for that event, I know that they'll be doing it as a J Resonator killer. So it does kill it uh, with its activated ability. Really? Yeah. So, so I did do have another, like, two or three questions. I had heard, or you guys had uh, posted in the chat or something that they might the company might actually be releasing something releasing a yeah CR, so CR or a new I had seen there. in the Italian group somebody asking if there's a CR update and someone said there's one somebody's making one or there's one coming out soon and uh, I shared that with you guys and you are like oh that's probably just speculation I was like okay yeah but um, somebody actually posted the same thing in the global group in which uh, Stephanie Shaw had commented on it saying that she had heard something that there might be an update to the CR and while it's not on time to where we always get the CR updates, it just be patient and it should, you know, be here at some point in time. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what that 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 well, brings with it. Even though I mean, a rat is going to go on a CR. A CR is just going to be, you know, yeah. clarifying of rules. Well, but. I think the, the the thing about that is that I think because from what from what I understand, there's a whole discussion with loss of life and what that is, mm-hmm. um, and that. Old cards said damage is not loss of life. Right, it's reduced um, life. Correct, yeah. And I think the CR right now says, I don't really know what it says. I, it kind of, I, I haven't reread it. I haven't really looked at it. Um, but the way that Oscar was telling me that some of the judges have been leaning towards is like, for example, with uh, um, Lich, was it Lich? Who loses life and then gains life at the end of the turn? Lucifer. Lucifer, Lucifer. okay. So with Lucifer... Um, he says that if you lost life this turn, you gain that much life back, right? Right. Um, and so my understanding was that the judges were kind of, uh, they were pushing towards stuff that actually makes, says you lose 400 life Mm -hmm. and that costs and damage does not apply to that. Right. Right. Got that right. So like, it'd be nice to get clarification, for example, in the CR or, you know, same way this whole guard loki thing is going with like especially with uh um hades right the no satan satan i was like that bfa card i was no no yeah i I, i've been getting my demons mixed up but um uh, satan satan seems like it works with costs and loss of life but not damage so you know Mm -hmm. it's nice to get clarification on what um because i think he says if you if a, if a, if an effect causes you to lose life or or uh, or a cost causes you to lose life yeah. then you put a counter on them i mean well I, obviously it's not going to be damaged the only clean up in the air is if if pain life counts mm-hmm. as loss of life yeah um yeah, yeah. but yeah i think okay, and it's interesting yeah cuz that's another card that in another language also clarified pain life also counted toward it in addition to loss of life the uh, lucifer yeah Oh, okay. um, interesting. But uh, in English and stuff, it does not clear, uh, yeah. say that. It just says loss. So I don't know which one's the correct. If it's pain life in addition to that, that's like obviously super, super strong, uh, especially in. Well, uh, I don't. I don't really agree because the, the whole point of the template of his card was that you pay. You, it, it says like you pay a thousand life and you pay three mana, and you get him from the graveyard to your field. I think. 
and then he recoups the loss, the 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 life that you paid at the end of the turn. No, no, um, any life you pay or lose, he recoups during the entire turn, all of it. So if you have, if you play uh, uh, the one card that makes your opponent. Or that makes it so you can pay a thousand life and deal five hundred to your opponent, and then you pay four hundred life and draw a card, and then you use uh, the life to bring him on the field or whatever, and then you play you guard a Loki to lose four hundred life. At the end of your turn, you gain all that back, so you just uh, you didn't have to pay the life for all those different things. You did a free five hundred damage. You drew a card for free. You put a resonator out for free. It does all that stuff. You just recoup all of it at the end of your turn. My point is though that the way the judges are looking at it now is that paying life like if, if a card says pay 400 life uh, you will not gain that life back at the end of the that's day. what I'm saying yeah that's what I'm saying is up in the air of what, what right but be. my point my point is that Lucifer's abil- both of his abilities you pay life and it seems yeah. to me like the point of his card is that he recoups the own life that you paid you would think well well, yes, I would think. That's why I think the CR update should include both of those as loss of life. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, which but, makes sense with how Lucifer works, but we'll see what they right, do. Right, exactly. It, it, it would make it super strong. <coughs> but, and real quick, going back to the thing. point. It's, it's a super rare, like, one of the, you know, it's like it's supposed to be as strong as Isis and as strong as, uh, you know, it, Satan and all those No, that's, that, that's, that's too strong. It, like, already... The pay a thousand deal five on to your opponent is potentially like I I've found to be super super strong and paying for life to draw a card. So, so there's so, other cards in the game that do that, uh-huh. and being able to recoup that life, would, having a card that recoups that life that you pay, I would think is too strong. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. we'll de- agree to disagree. But no, there's no way to disagree about that. My if, point, if, my if, point if is pain that if you said in the past, Joy, that the pay a thousand deal five hundred to your opponent is super strong. So if there was an ability that was just like, hey, once per turn, you just deal five hundred to your opponent for free, just any time you want, you would agree that that is too First strong, all, correct? No, because it's not for free. You it is for free. A certain amount of times you can't once pay per turn six thousand life. No, I no, just no, no. said, I literally, you guys can rewind, I said, if once, if there's an ability that once per turn, you can deal 500 to your opponent, that is super strong. And if you have multiple of those resonators on the field, then you're just doing a thousand damage to your opponent per turn and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. you're drawing cards for free. And you're... And there's uh, counterplay to it by destroying the, the Lucifer. Well, you could say that about any deck. There's counterplay no. to Isis by destroying Isis. Because there's counterplay there's to every risk. resonator in existence by destroying that resonator. That's not actually counterplay. Because there's a, no, no, because there's a larger risk to this counterplay. Because paying that life is a lot of life paid. Like, if you pay 3,000 life to deal 1,500 damage and then Lucifer dies, that's a giant risk. That's not just a regular, oh, he has counterplay risk. That's a huge counterplay risk. That's well, my no, point. It depends, once again, on his ability. Uh, cause, yeah, because if it's the pay, then uh, I'd have to read him again, but I, I would imagine it's not that hard to get him back on the field. It is pretty difficult. All right, we're going to go ahead and move that conversation but, along. Yeah, yeah. Real yeah, quick, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, because I didn't... You, you guys moved on to a different conversation, but before I could say uh, anything... I, are you? Is this more on this current conversation? I was going to wrap it up with one last opinion. Uh, I was going back to Loki, so it's, Okay, I'm like, gonna wrap up this 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 one, and you can go back to that. Is that okay. um, I just want to be clear. Like I I I brought the, the the subject up so that everybody understands that's kind of how it's working now. Um, I'm not against it for any power level reasons, like oh this is too strong or whatever. So I'll accept it for what it is. I was more of, of the only thing I was against was like oh, this is an English card. Do you see this card in English? This is what it says. I do. This is what I do the company say anything else no they didn't oh, okay my only only like resistance towards it was other people are saying it. you know like who, who are these other people you know what i'm saying this is the only only resistance i had against the entire thing uh from the start with um but i get it now you know I, I, if that's how yeah. higher level events will be run anywhere else people are getting ready for those events that's how it should be played so that's just i just want to bring that up so that everybody it was to everybody's attention and then uh you know, we can yeah i think I think, uh, I personally think we should keep both of them on their English because it's easier for players. Uh, dealing with those types of big erratas is, is, is not good for new players or just players in general. Going by what it says is better. But also I think both this and Loki are just better balance-wise with the, these wordings. I, 
going back to the Loki thing, I think, and I've said this before, or no, Loki uh, is what I want to go back to, is I think, I I personally think Loki is is way too strong with the um, uh, second ability added in. Uh, Being able to, for three cost, during your opponent's draw phase, discard what they drew and just destroy a resonator or a J-Ruler oh. and, and for three cost you yeah, have sorry, a J-Ruler we, we went away from the Lucifer conversation back to the Loki no 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 I was I, th- I thought he he was talking he was talking about the perfect Loki not Utgard uh, no, no. Utgard Ud- that, that's yeah. what so I was, was talking I was about that's what I was saying I was going back to that what Loki we were thinking about um, I, I think because the perfect example is I, I real quick threw together a deck <laughs> and I was playing against Joey and Joey was also playing Lucifer deck and so he's discarding cards in my hand and I'm discarding cards and hit. mine was a just a troll deck to try and see how much, if discarding, I could just lock them down, and there's stuff I could make better in it, because I lost, but I was literally, I think it was one, I forget what it was, Joey, maybe you remember, it was like either one card or one, like, will away from having you on lockdown. I had two Lokis in hand, which means that your hand was discarded, which means you would have drawn, I would have made you discard, and you would have drawn next turn, and I would have made you discard. So I would have had you on complete lockdown, that was with you discarding cards in my hand, and uh, and stuff like that. So on top of that, being able to discard and have board control and kill something you have in your field, you had judgmented at one point. Being able to kill your J ruler and discard something in your hand, I think that's that's way too too strong for something that I already think is too strong without the destruction. It was just the quick point I wanted to make. So I we'll see how. It, I don't think people are really going to catch on or care about that because people are more excited about Isis and Perfect Loki, so yeah. I don't think people will even play the Lucifer discard. Not because it's not strong enough, but just because it's not what is exciting right now. But I think that, it? especially at the at locals, someone playing that at locals with especially newer people is not a good thing to have. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we can move on. I like how you, you phrase it as uh, nobody wants to play it. They want to play this other stuff. It's like, no, it's oh, yeah. just not as good as the other stuff is what it comes down to. No, I'd say, I, we have, I, well, I haven't played Tess against anything else, but I I personally think it's it's super strong, but we'll, we'll see when we play Tess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so moving this along. We have four, 45 minutes. Um, let's see. What, what do we do here? Um... Rewind. We're going to rewind is what we're going to do. Um, mm-hmm. The secondary market. Colin wanted to bring up a point about it. And I, I didn't want to skip that point. So go ahead, Colin. What what was, what'd you want to say about the secondary market? That's that's uh, locked behind the paywall, remember? <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling that right back out. Here you go, everybody. Special, <laughs> special Oscar, treat. I'm, like, I'm paying Oscar's for like, this you know for you guys. You guys are getting it paid a, for by there's me. There's a very good argument going on. There is. With, is, is, this, really is this the last topic? To is this the last topic? Now, we have arguing. more to talk about. So, so Joey anyways, and Colin are arguing. You know what? I want to argue too. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, go ahead, Colin. You you made a comment before the podcast about the secondary market. Yeah. I well, I get. I don't want to go into it because I want some topic for the mini podcast. But oh the, all, all I, I said, I have was, a topic for the mini podcast. So let's just go into. Is it. that the secondary Super market fun. right now is is one of the most expensive markets Forcible has had in the history of the game? All I said was no. That's all I wanted. And I completely disagree. <laughs> Why do you say that, though, Oscar? Because otherwise said, there's no context. Right. I said, when we got into this game, TTW had just come out, and jewel stones were expensive. The, 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 the market back then was way more expensive than it is now. It The decisions after MOA slowly started to trickle it to make it cheaper, 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 cheaper as more sets came out and came out and came out. That's all I wanted to say is this is not the most expensive point in Force Wheel's history. That's that was I'll I'll say, say, I'll I would disagree. Kinda, there, I kind of see both sides. But there's no single say, cards? Go ahead. I, I will say that I don't know about dual stones. I think Oscar was right. They were pretty expensive. Um, but I will say that I think um, um, Cheshire Cats were like $25 uh, a piece, I think. And, they, yeah. and like everybody was, was running them, so it, it was more sense. than that. Because I remember, what was it? I thought it was twenty. The, I think they they like peaked 40. at thirty. I think for uh, regular for regular art, yeah. yeah, yeah, for yeah. the normal one. Um, oh um, yeah, well the 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 booty cat was yeah. it was like way the heck up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but my my point is, so I see where Oscar's coming from. Mm-hmm. I like I think I think even um, even you know 
Reflector Frame was like a $30, $20, $30 card. I mean, um, um, I don't know either way. The only like thing I have to support where I was coming from was that like when I did my history videos, we actually had Stephanie Shaw uh, weigh in on it, saying that there was people investing in dual stones because that's where the money was, was in dual stones. And then when it, when, yeah. when the Vingolf was announced, that was just shot to, to crap. It was like they lost their value, and that that was one of the first waves of people leaving the game was, was that because they, they invested in them, thinking that's where the money would be just because they probably had the experience of magic with something else. Yeah, and I, and I then the it, was, it was gone. That's, see, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at was that was the, the supporting evidence behind it saying that this isn't currently the most expensive we've ever been in. We've had that before. This is expensive. Here, this this could be expensive, and I'm 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 not gonna say it's not, but it's not the most expensive. He, here's here's where I think we're, we, you're getting confused. Real quick, si- side note: I just noticed that booster boxes are now 150 dollars and 160 dollars for this mm-hmm. set. They're no longer 100. Um, I'm sure, Rudy helped with that. Um, <laughs> His video saying so, 200 bucks. <laughs> the there's no single cards obviously that are going to be more expensive in set than other sets obviously there's no chases there's no uh rulers and stuff like that we're not going to have that my point is that consistently across the board this is the most expensive set so if you go back to say uh uh whichever one cheshire cats and you have cheshire cat at 30 bucks and probably have another card at 15 bucks and then all the others are whatever five dollars six dollars whatever the ratio might have been back then i don't know but this one it doesn't have that 30 dollar card that outside of the four obviously the four arts here are 30 bucks and stuff like that but for regular just normal srs across the board are um uh eight to thirteen dollars just across the board nothing is below eight dollars if i remember right that are that is an sr just across the board and so I don't think we've ever had a set that has a minimum entry price for uh, 20, 20 of the cards. One third of the cards in this set are $8 per piece. For the, so if you were to do the math, $8, a uh, third of the set, uh, that's something like, uh, oh, okay, I can't do it in my head right now. But it's a very high entry point for the game, which I think is, with the except, excluding high single card prices like the standout single card in a set for example last set technically would have been arwen as the promo would have been that standout single card this doesn't have any of those with the exception of that this is the highest like entry point for making any deck single deck and enforce will like any deck you can think of to make that involves cards from this set especially the srs has a minimum entry point of of 32 dollars for a play set of a card if you run two srs which almost everything, uh, most of the decks will, uh, that's $64 minimum entry point just for eight cards, not including anything else in the deck. And so that's my point of, like, I think this is potentially one of, if not the most I, expensive sets. I don't know. I I see your reasoning, Colin, but looking at Oscar's reasoning, where you literally have to have dual stones to play like you would have had to have dual stones back in the days you need to have these srs to play you physically can't win without these srs now my point is that you can't play and you can't win without those stones and four stones is 120 dollars so like obviously i see where you're coming from i i I but but the stones were separated into two sets like oscar had pointed out so if you're running set stones from a different set and they're cheaper in that set or something like that there there's a weird differential there uh, uh, depending on what deck you potentially are running I think and so that might be a little bit harder to tell on what that entry point is and it also depends on how much the stones were I don't know if we ever found that out yeah. I don't know I think I think a mana base is a bigger a barrier of entry than just you know super rare winning the game yeah. uh, I just wanted to, to bring this out uh, away from the Patreon podcast because I wanted to get everybody's opinions on it because I'm sure there's people who are listening who have been here way longer than we have playing the game um, like f- for us, I know peaked interest was during SKL spoilers, but we didn't actually jump into like Raf TTW had already released, like the Twilight Wanderer. It was like the Moonlight Savior was our first pre-release, and like we, before that, we just picked up dual decks and we're trying to learn the game. So mm-hmm. I just wanted people whose whose opinions probably are heavier weighed, who've been here longer, to, to let us know in the comments below. Uh, you can tweet at us, message us on Facebook, whatever. Let, let us know, I guess, kind of which one was more than the other. We'll put a poll. I haven't done a poll in a while. We'll put a poll right here in the video for those of you watching on YouTube. 
Uh, Poe doesn't this. matter for is this was this more expensive. That's just straight up. Let's just find out. <laughs> it's like, hey, let's run a poll on how hot it was today. It's like that's irrelevant to how hot it was today. It has nothing to do with Con, it. See, Khan okay. knows okay. he's gonna be wrong. Okay. That's why he doesn't want the. All right, okay. guys, no poll because Khan um, doesn't want to be wrong. I have his feelings here. No, Sorry. I say comment below and let us know what the pricing was. But also, I think my point of what I'm trying to get across, <laughs> by, I, I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly because you can say like did, dual stones yeah. were this much, but that's irrelevant relevant to my point of the overall set no you're you're crystal more. clear I, I got where i get where you're coming from i was and i i think i made my point pretty clear where i was coming from now we just need to see what both the, points are very also clear. right now we're at he, the most he's, ex- he's getting Here, ready. here's something you can't argue with here's getting, something you can't he's getting argue ready with ready for when he's wrong you be like no nah, see my point wasn't clear as all it was they didn't understand what i was trying to say <laughs> this he said i'll say two already. things i'll say two things <laughs> one one, uh, objectively, the, as of right now, this is the most expensive booster box in Force of History. Two. At 180? Um, uh, I don't know. How much? Because uh, as of right now, two towers held boxes? up pretty, for, for, pre, for, for a long time. Even when other yeah, boxes dropped, I, it held I never saw two towers above 150. Wasn't, wasn't Vingolf 3 the most expensive boxes? I said uh, booster box, yeah, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you oh. said booster box. He clarified. Yeah, it's just set. Yeah, except Vingol 3 was good. But um, two uh, is uh, well. Even if I'm wrong, it's just I can abbreviate to oh, past three years. My bad uh, for a game that literally sold itself on. You can get a place of everything in three boxes, and it's an easy, cheap point of entry. Yeah. It's like, and the point I'm getting to Oscar, and I think this is going to be the mindset of of a lot of people who are like, like oh, I like Force of Will. It's super easy, cheap for my friends to get into. At this point, for people who are not as into it as, say, us or other people, what's the point of getting into this game when it, it's getting close to as expensive as Pokemon or Magic? When those, you can guarantee, has your locals, has your product, has everything. You, What is the motivation outside of, I like anime stuff? Like, it's... Yeah, the, there's, yeah... If the power I, I levels definitely... are going crazy off the charts and you like anime stuff, go play Yu-Gi-Oh! If... if, if if it's super expensive and you want and you're fine with paying more, but you want to have a local, then you can go play Magic or Pokemon. Like yes, this plays better and stuff like that, but it playing better than Magic is irrelevant if the power levels are off whack, which we'll find mm-hmm. out, I guess, and, and down the road. But so I think the price point of entry is significant because this game isn't like it was when it was more expensive. Uh, with like with dual stones and stuff what you guys were talking about because back then the game was way bigger than it was now back then rudy did the video and he was talking about how at that point it was considered to potentially be one of an actual contender for the top three games because of the exponential way it was exploding until force will ruined it and so it, it at that time yeah you can have higher price point of cards because you're contending with the big games you have big locals and stuff like that but if you're not contending with them then making this almost what uh, it might not be intentional but it feels almost like an intentional forcing of like uh, the secondary market being pushed up to this really high cost and booster boxes being hard to get to and expensive makes a really hard entry point for players or to maintain them yeah i mean i'm curious to see where things go as well and like my i woke up this morning and it was weird because one of the first thoughts i had and i kind of I was like, ooh, I kind of hope that doesn't happen. Was like, we were like, oh, uh, Valhalla Starter Decks came out. You know, they didn't reprint them. Eesh, people can't get them. And like, this is happening with the set. I'm like, ooh, is this another Valhalla Starter situation? Like, are people are going to jump into the game like when you the next cluster, when our, when next cluster comes out? And they're like, oh, yeah. oh this red deck solid. You know what I need? I need a uh, Nyarotha Nar- Tep and Lysis. And it's like, oh. Uh, they're going for like thirty, forty a piece or something like that. Something dumb. Like, ooh, those boxes are going for one fifty. I that's expensive. Like it's available, but it's expensive. It's like that's my only worry right now. It's like something like that happening. Uh, to prevent people from cause I think that every cluster if there's there's that, you know, kachunk people jump on, you know what I'm saying? And and mm-hmm. I'm just worried that, that that's not as successful this go around because well, of that fact. Hopefully. See, that's actually a super good point because I, I didn't even think because I'm thinking of like yeah the cards are expensive and that sucks because like like I've said before it sucks because I'm like <laughs> oh I I have to choose like one maybe two decks I want to make and then that's it where I usually I like to experiment and make three or four decks mm-hmm. and stuff like that see what I like um, and I well not what I like but I just like switching it up so I don't get bored and I can't with this set but yeah that's a good point of like going fu- in the, to the future any deck that's going to be good is going to ha- for sure have 
quite a decent amount of cards, especially if the mana fixers turn out to be a big thing. Most of the SRs and, and a lot of the rares are going to be like staples in decks. And so, yeah, that is a point. Like, ironically, the deck that reprinted the starters because people needed the star decks, that booster box is going to have cards that are staples that and they're not going to reprint and people need it to play the game. And so are they just going to keep reprinting stuff over and over again? Which, which is a potential theory for future stuff they will do and stuff. So, like, uh, yeah, that's a good point I didn't think about. Yeah. Yes. Um, the the wrap-up, like, topic I'll, I'll bring up right now is is, is Next Cluster. So uh, we, we have some information knowing that it's a, it's a smaller set, right? So it's, like, uh, be, or smaller set meaning 30, 20 packs. 30 packs? 20 oh, okay. packs inside of a booster box. Yeah. Like I mentioned in the beginning, it's $48 on Happy Little Hug Factor for a booster box. So you want to get multiple of those. We don't know full, like, um, ratio. necessarily if they're changing pack ratios or anything like that. What comes in a booster box? Are you guaranteed this amount? Uh, all that type of stuff. Obviously, we, we probably won't know till box is open because it's not like we'll, we'll hear from the company or anything. Uh, unless maybe maybe somebody inadvertently asked that in that Q&A that... Uh, that we'll hear back from soon, hopefully. So, but, so it was, um, it was $48 for 20 packs? Yes. 20 packs, 20 yeah. Packs. So mathematically, okay. we're still, looking still 10 at... Cards. Uh, is $2.40 uh, per pack? Um, I, was, I, was, I was already... So it. going by Happy Little Hug Factor pricing, Happy Little Hug Factor usually does $80 for 36 packs in a booster box, so $48. Uh, and so it's a roughly... Uh, what What is that? Um, one... Not not 1.5 times what? more per pack. I don't know math. No, Give no, me a no, sec. No, no. Well, okay, okay, it was. Listen, he let him, let him go over the math real quick. I'm just gonna mention things. So 20, math is very 20, 20 um. packs in the in the box. Still 10 cards. Uh, I believe ICB2 mentioned that there was gonna be stones back in the in the packs again. Mm -hmm. As the column was bringing up to, uh, to me. Um, there's also like since since every cluster has had a theme, there's no way we go back here without the regalia. But I don't think it'll be zero cost regalia. Um, it would yeah, definitely be, be a crazy. cost to the regalia. I don't know. If that means you get say Labatine, you look at it, you evaluate how much it should cost, and then you attach that cost to it, and then you know Lab Labatine stays at same whatever you know level of power it had, but at the appropriate cost, or if it's more like oh it's costed, but it's not as powerful either type of situation. So. I'd be interested in seeing um, where they where they, where they and take it. Him. It's also we also don't hundred percent know on the magic stones. It could be just because that whole sell sheet. It, you know, we've known Force Will they word stuff badly, so mm -hmm. it could be they're just referring to that box we get in the booster box that has the magic stones in it. Also, okay. that's what I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. But there, for yeah. some reason, that I assume they fired whoever does their sell sheet. I mean, so um, it's also not. I mean, yeah, it's it's nice to open a pack and not have the stones in it, especially if you're doing a draft. That's always like the last card you pass to somebody. But um, I, I do kind of miss hollow hollow basic stones. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. guess technically in this go around we did have them inside the star decks, but it was only like what half of the the, the stones were were hollow. But in this case, you'd always be opening them up and get. I would also like to see us go. I know it's asking for a lot to go back to like different stone art per se, because that was really exciting to see all the things. We didn't get all the animal stones, which we had told we were going to be a set at some point. We I would got... have liked to to yeah. I would have liked even if they're in the box, each set to have different stones. So it's like something different because when you play against each person it's like oh what stones are they choosing oh they're using eight different stones i hate you you know i used to do that but um i i i yeah and i, and I get it's asking for a lot i'm not, I'm not saying like you know they, they need to do that or anything but it would be cool if they did. Uh, but yeah next, next cluster I, i'm really hoping things really turn around like we'll find out like this set had you know and it's an opinion to people's opinions a rough uh, launch, uh, distribution, you know, whatever. I want to see what happens with the next one because that could set the pace of what happens to each of them. Uh, mm -hmm. If the next one's a little bit more su successful, uh, then I think it, it can, you know, offer some hope. And then at that point, we get that. And then I, 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 I get to this point every cluster, and it's usually because of one or two cards. In this case, just because of how, about how it ended. Um, but I would, I'd be like, oh, cool, this is going well. I can't wait for that last set to rotate, last cluster to rotate. Like, 
about how to rotate. So people don't worry about, I can't get into the game, the mini rulers are better if, they're, if they are yeah. better, things like that. I want people to be able to play the game to the way they were when everything first came out. I get people left the game already, and some people have moved on with their lives in general. Um, but I just want to see, you know, obviously see this game keep going. Because I have the most fun with this. Like, we've done dabbling in other games. I get all this cool stuff. It comes to this, like this, this right here. Nothing really beats it. <laughs> they make mistakes, and like we get upset, but it, it's like it's like this just has how much we care about it. You know, we we love it a lot. Obviously, I love it a lot, and I just don't want to see anything that, you know bad happen uh, anymore. Anyway. Um, so real quick, real quick, go back to the uh, it, the packs are ten percent more expensive per pack going by Happy Little Hook Factory pricing. Um, uh, and for anyone curious, so if you were to apply that to buying a regular booster pack box of thirty six packs, that booster box would be seven dollars and twenty cents more. So not a huge difference, but it is there. Um, but it, to, to did me, you have any that, other topics? Well, for, just on oh. well, no, this is the last topic. Um, I have one thing I want to. Uh, to to me though, on that is like it could be more per box at the full price of the bot for full pack distribution, but it's it's going to be easier because like. If I go to an L- my LGS and they have a box and it's forty eight bucks, I'm more likely to pick that up on the fly yeah. than spending dropping a hundred dollars. Well, keep a in box. mind, Happy Little Hug Factory does better. Like I said, that's what I was doing the caveat yeah. of they do eighty dollars for the boosters, which like our locals doesn't do usually and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's a caveat of eighty dollars for forty eight dollars. Uh, forty eight dollars might not be the norm pricing, but right. yeah, no, I mean it makes it's, it easier cheaper. for me because it's, 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 I can't it's, drop. Yeah, right. It's a lower, it's a lower price point. Like, like uh, for for you, if you go to sell some of your cards, you sell more cards to get a box, you know. But you sell fewer cards now and get a box. I don't know. It's just it's just an easier point. Like I think again, I think you made the point the other day. Like somebody who's new can just be like, hey, I'll take a box. That's only forty or fifty, it's sixty like, bucks. You know. Yeah. It's like it's Don't like eat. it's like fat packs and magic. Like mm-hmm. I personally like it more because you know I, I think it sounds better because I like I like buy I would like buying stuff in more digestible you know sizes. Right. Like if I I can get one point five booster boxes you know instead of having having to get two booster boxes you know in case like in case I don't you know you could get you could buy boost like let's say you want a playset of X you can buy booster boxes. You know, buy one, buy two, buy three, and then stop instead of buying, you know, two full booster boxes. I don't know. But I think it was interesting. It, well, like I said, I, I'm mixed on it, but I, it's really going to depend on their their execution of it. It could go either way. Um, I, I personally still like the bigger booster boxes, and I'd prefer they use a smaller product. Like you said, fat packs and stuff is my preferred thing, so I can buy the big booster box and then have the little stuff in between. <laughs> But uh, th- this could turn out to be perfectly. Or this would probably turn out to be perfectly fine. But the one quick thing I want to do it before we close out is just real quick, uh, like what your guys is. If you guys could give a decisive battle of Valhalla a score out of ten, as everything like uh, you know, the the execution, the 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 packs the uh cards in it uh, like the whole package together out of out of 10 what would you give this set it's it's tough because because what i would see it as is like here's seven uh factors that come into play and here's my my rating per factor now let me average all those factors together to give you your answer and uh if i did that i would probably give it right around 7.5 yeah, I would say like what yeah what what your gut yeah, is like co- combining all those different factors yeah, like if you're to be like to I, I just want to make it clear like, in case just so people know like it, it could be like oh there's a one on distribution but you know there's a ten on print print quality type thing right yeah <clears throat> yeah like, yeah, like, I, like I, I could probably give gut reactions for the other sets of like everything combined but yeah yeah so seven point mm-hmm. five Joey I I can't like. I really don't want to rate it on, like, distribution. Um, whole I wouldn't necessarily I take well, in distribution now. My thing is that, like, I don't experience that stuff because I just play Lackey <laughs> now. And I'm like, I have all the cards anyways. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but I, So I feel like I, I'm really kind of only basing it around, like, um, card quality, what the cards did to the, to the game. Um, I give it you like mean, a, n- not the physical card quality, like the actual right, cards yeah. themselves. Yeah. yeah, like the the power levels, the the new stuff, the new mechanics. Like I'd give it like a I don't know, like an eight point five. Like I love, I like a lot that 
everything did kind of get really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Like even Shiva, who I thought is like one of the weaker one of the weaker decks you can kind of build around, I still think would be pretty fun to build. You know, so I go like an eight point five. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, I, I I would agree that I like all the stuff that was introduced. I I think it. it for me personally, it falls into the trap that a lot of other stuff Force Will has done. It falls into, which is like, here's all this awesome stuff on this card, and then here's like one step too far. And that, I feel like, was a consistent theme with a lot of the cards where they're super good and then they added stuff. Uh, and and it's going to lead to some interesting themes, we'll see. But, yeah, I would... Like, the print quality alone probably gives it a full extra point for me. Because the print quality was amazing. Yeah, it was really good. Um, as you guys saw in our box opening us talking about it but yeah i'd probably give it like a yeah probably like a 6.5 or a 7 somewhere around there but um well, that, that's just my personal preference for how i like my card games this i don't like big power level stuff that's but yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, I definitely uh, mentioned you guys uh, check out, I guess, soon. We'll have some gameplay up, uh, actual IRL gameplay between Colin and I. Maybe I'll take a camera to Locals and film that. Um, and, and if you're just wanting to see some lackey play, you can you know tune into uh, you know Patreon and check some of that stuff out. And um, we just haven't what had are we a talking about on our mini podcast, Joey? Hmm? What are we talking about on the mini podcast? Well, I had a, a diff a different idea, but I mean yeah. we didn't talk about the the the. The ARG, AGP, the GP. Oh, we didn't okay. talk about those so we'll, results at all. So we'll talk about it, those results in our main it, podcast. It wasn't a GP. It was an Italian Masters, just to be clear. Italian Masters. Yeah. There's like, I know, whatever. And, but uh, no, yeah. I, so I think, we'll, I think that'd be cool to talk about. Cool. I and talk about it anyway. and uh, thank you guys for listening. And uh, yep. we'll see you on next time. Bye. Bye.